Hiya, Martin here and welcome to this week's project video. I hope you are all well and you've had super creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. Right, this week um, I'm going to be using the reactive paints again because a lot of people asked me if I would do a video about how I made this piece of um, Marle Burr with um, the kind of the, the rusty looking shield and stuff in there with the with the copper leaf so that's what i thought i would do this week and the back has been rusted uh, as well so that's what i'm going to be doing this week is a sort of a companion piece to this wall hanging so down here down here i have another piece of the marley burr and um I think it will look quite nice as a freestanding ornament. So eventually I'm going to cut the bottom off it. And uh, I think looking at it, I want to put the center about here somewhere, I think somewhere about there. So the, so the center boss kind of falls off the, uh, falls off the piece. Um, so I'm going to put it onto a face plate because I don't want to be doing anything on the back, uh, nothing at all. So this will just be turned completely off um, the face plate and it's not very level. So I'm just going to let it sit on, um, on the lathe bed and put the face plate over the top, roughly where I want the centre, which is yeah. It's tr tricky, it's a little bit hit and miss. So I'll put it about there. But looking at it, it's not very level. So I need to block, chock it up. So over here, oop, here I've got some little wooden blocks that I'm going to put underneath and screw through to give it that extra little bit of um, support and it's not very level that way round either. Up under there as well. That looks pretty good now. Now I just need to screw down those, screw down in there with different length uh, screws. I'm not going to worry about the screw holes because you'll see why towards the end of the video but I just need to screw that down and make sure it's as secure as I can possibly make it. Right, so here it is, um, mounted up on the face plate. There are seven screws in the back, um, holding it firmly in place, and I can't shift it. That is as safe as I can make it. And if you're going to attempt something like this, then you need, you need to be the judge on the safety of your mounting. Um, I can't pull that off. So I am content that that is as strong as I can possibly, possibly make it. And for this one, I'm gonna be wearing a face shield just in case. So I'm gonna bring the tailstock up for a little bit of added security for as long as possible and get the tool rest into position and whilst I'm doing this I'm going to keep out of the firing line as much as possible and I'm keeping all loose sleeves and everything out the way and I don't wear rings anyhow so I don't need to worry about those Okay.
Now I've finished facing off the piece as much as I want. I've left that bit because I don't want to take too much wood off the, off the surface. Um, so I've got the extractor running and uh, I'm going to sand it down. But because there's so much air to catch, I don't think sanding it with it spinning is a good idea. So I'm going to put the spindle lock on and sand it stationary and I'm going to use the drill because of time primarily because um, I don't want to be standing there like this for days so I'm going to use the drill um, there aren't too many tool marks in it but I'm still going to hit it with 60 to start with and also I'm going to need 60 to take away this annoying bit here you're not going to hear me talking very much there we go it's um, I've sanded it down to 600 and it's come up really nicely now there's a little bulge left in the middle and I did that deliberately um, because around there is going to be the sort of the center the center boss thing and I need a pencil and I'm going to work out now where I want to put my ridges um, if you have a look at the oh, original piece uh, it's got ridges, it looks, you know, well, round and it's got ridges and sort of waves in it. So I need to kind of figure out where they're going to go. Um, but I've got to start with the centre and I want the centre to come off the piece just a little bit. That's quite big. So let's try, <laughs> yeah, that is a bit too big. So let's try a smaller one. No, a little bit bigger. That'll be all right. So the center's gonna go there. Put another, oh yeah, oh. Now that wasn't very clever. That, <laughs> that just goes to show what can happen to a tool if you, um, damn, um, if you get a catch. So let's find another pencil. So in there, and then one more to the outside of that, which will go off the top a bit. So I hope you can see that, okay. There's, um, there's the piece free running. I'm gonna put the face shield back on, and I'm going to use um, a small bowl gouge for that. I think that's... Um, 12 bill, I'm not sure. Um, right, so there's the center. So I want to dive that down a little bit. I'm gonna leave this mound and then cut downwards and then back up. Um, it's off the lathe as you can see and I've put it down on some board um, just resting on the lathe bed um, 
and I've decided, I'm, I, well, what I did was I smoothed over the outside ring just to show off a little bit more wood because I, I was looking at it and I was thinking, actually, there's not going to be an awful lot of, of the natural wood left um, to see. Uh, some of you are going to argue the fact that I shouldn't actually be doing this to uh, Marley Burr in the first place, um, which is fine. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. But I think the end result is going to be really quite spectacular. So anyway, we'll see. Um, right, I've got the the Modern Masters um, iron paint because that's the first layer that goes on. This is going to take a little bit of time and I'm going to use um, a sea sponge and then I'm going to dab it everywhere that I want it. And now with the activator spray, I am just going to carefully spray over the top of the piece. I'm going to try not to get it over here onto the, um, the bit that's going to remain kind of natural wood. And if it does go over there, like it has, not very much, I can just wipe it off. And that's another reason why I added sanding sealer to it prior to this stage. Now I need to leave that to dry and then the reaction will, um, will happen in its own time. And considering I'm relatively impatient, it might be quite difficult. <laughs> it might be quite difficult. But you really do need to leave this stuff to, um, to go off and set in its own time. You can't, you can't hurry it because the reaction won't be as good as, uh, as you want it to be. Okay, right, it's two days on from when I applied the um, oxidizing iron paint. And as you can see, it's just gorgeous. That orange is just so punchy, I love it. And it really, you know, kind of sets off the center of the piece. But I'm not done with the oxidizing paints just yet. I'm now going to use the um, bronze paint, which will go blue when um, oh, when I apply the um, when I apply the activator. Again, not not worrying about how thickly it goes on. So using the um, the sea sponge again. Yeah, so I'm going to dry that off with the um, with the hot air gun. So I can have a bit of a sort of a bronze base layer. And then dab it on again. Being careful to leave the orange visible as much as possible. But yeah, now I can leave that to go off, to dry, and um, wait and see what happens. But it's gonna be another few days before I can get back to it. It's been, oh, it's been about four days now since, uh, since I put the paint on. And as you can see, it's gone a really lovely blue color. It was a lot brighter before I added some sanding sealer, which I needed to add over the top here so I can apply the Gilder's size for the copper leaf that I'm going to be putting on in a minute. Um, you can see how bright it was by looking, by looking in this area here. It was uh, really quite bright and it looked new. And of course, this piece doesn't have a feeling of being new. It has a feeling of being much older. So by applying the acrylic spray sealer, which I used, um, it's just dulled it down a little bit. 
So next step is to use Gilda's um, acrylic size, which is what you put on when, ugh, when you're going to apply copper leaf or gold leaf or silver leaf or whatever. And I'm only gonna put it in this central boss here. And I want to get a nice crisp line where the, where the leaf ends. So I'm gonna spin the lathe fairly slowly and apply a little bit, whoops, a little bit of the size from the center and just very carefully push it out, making sure that it doesn't run over the top of the little ridge there. And that's it, you need a tiny little amount and now you've got to wait 15 minutes before you can apply the leaf. Right, it's about 15 minutes later and I've got the piece off the lathe and uh, in this little book, this tissue book here, I've got the copper leaf. And um, you may be able to see there that the, uh, the, the Gilder's size, it's essentially a glue, I think it's some kind of PVA, is, um, is not quite dry. So I need to take one sheet of this incredibly thin copper leaf and when you've got cold hands, it's not as easy as it looks. So I get one leaf very carefully. And then if you've got a Gilder's brush, then use a Gilder's brush, but I don't. So I'm going to use some kitchen towel. Lay on a corner and just start to tap it into the area that you want covered in copper. If it breaks like it did there, when you peel it off, you can just lay it back on and pat it back down again. And you keep doing that and just patting it down. It's a good idea not to sneeze either, because if you sneeze, it can make a mess. And looking at it, there are some areas here that I've actually missed with the Gilder's size, which is a bit of a pain. So I'll carefully take that bit away. And the, oh, actually, might be okay. Carefully take those bits away. And then you can rub those bits back down. So anywhere where the, the size hasn't touched won't get any of the copper leaf on. And there we have actually a mound that I'm really quite pleased with. I'm quite happy with that. You can see that it's nice and shiny. And now I can take the green, the green patina which will just turn the copper on the inside green. Everything else is dry, um, so we shouldn't get much of a reaction from the bronze paint that's on there. We might get a little reaction out of the, um, the iron paint, but I'm not worried, really not worried at all. So I'm gonna put a couple of squirts of the green patina on, just like that, and then um, leave it until tomorrow <laughs> again. So there's another day gone by and we've got to wait for it all to dry off and then tomorrow that, uh, that copper should be green. And then in the next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how I finish the back of the piece and uh, the front of the piece as well. So it's another four or five days now since I last touched the project and uh, I've now taken it off the lathe and I've taken the uh, faceplate off the back and I've taped up the front of the piece because the next step or the next couple of steps I need to protect it from any kind of overspill and I've also um, inserted a couple of uh, brass rods down the bottom for when I stick it onto the base. Now I've still got some screw holes here from um, from the faceplate which need to be filled before I before I paint the back. And I'm gonna use um, coffee grind um, because it's 
it's inexpensive and uh, it'll go in nicely and sand back reasonably as well and hide the holes. And I'm gonna do that with a bit of thin CA. So I'm gonna run some thin CA into, um, into the holes and then just rub the coffee grind in. I'm not gonna to worry too much that I've got a bit of um, overspill and some stray coffee grinds like that because it's gonna be painted. So I've just basically got to do that for all seven holes and then uh, the job will be done. So it's a little while later and the CA glue has gone off and um, I, I helped it with a bit of zip kicker, a bit of accelerant. And because I want to make um, a matching pair with this piece, what, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rust the back of this piece as well. And um, I'm gonna use the iron oxidizing paint for that um, and, a, and a sea sponge and dab it on. I'm gonna dab it, dab it on all over the back. And at this point, those of you who are, who are purists of Marley Burr are going to be absolutely screaming at your TVs or your computers or your phones or tablets or whatever because you're, you're not gonna like what I'm doing. Um, but never mind. Some of you are going to love it and I think, I hope, Many of you will love the absolute final piece, which I will show you shortly. So I've got to put on probably at least three coats of this um, to get a really, really nice rust effect on the end. So that will probably take me up to an hour to apply, I suppose. There's the rust paint on. I've put um, two fairly thick coats of it on, and I've now got the activator spray. And it's really important with the iron one that you let it dry before you activate it and then um, squirt it on. If it runs down the, um, the channels in the, in the burr, don't worry about it. It'll be all adding to the character. And what, um, what I'll do is I'll let this dry off a little bit and then add more of the activator spray to create a bit more of a heavy rust feel to it. And here it is. Here is the final piece. Um, I can't tell you what a relief it is to actually have this piece finished. It, it seems to have taken um, an age to get complete, but now it's done. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, on the bottom here is, um, is just a block of wood um, block of pine actually that um, that I've lacquered with about 15 coats of lacquer um, and then drilled in um, a couple of holes for two brass posts which support the piece just off the um, just off the base there and then there's the back that's been rusted and I really love the final the final kind of effect of it and I think that this piece is a very nice companion piece to this one. So I think having thought about it and having spoken to people about it on, uh, on Facebook, they've been described as the Marley sisters. So um, when I put them up for sale on the website, they'll go as a pair and um, they will be known as the, the Marley sisters. Well, apologies that this video has taken so long to, uh, to get out to you. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon for another project video. But in the meantime, if you have any comments or queries, then uh, please do let me know in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But in the meantime, thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.